guys, welcome to my channel. This video has been highly requested, so I'm super stoked to do this today. I have to do my brows anyways, so I was like, I might as well film a video. Uh, I almost just swallowed a freaking lemon seed. I guess I've been doing my brows in a way lately that you guys like, so thank you, because this is what I was born with right here. I have a little bit of microblading, but with the makeup and foundation I have on this, you can't really, there's a little bit of fullness put in there, but like, for the most part, these are my chate brows. Where is my brow thing? I'm trying to brush these out, thank you so much. So this is kind of what we're working with. Each side is different, which makes it challenging because you need them to look at least like they're related. They don't have to be twins, but they should at least be sisters or maybe cousins, probably sisters though, or really close friends. Same thing. You know, I go through phases with brow products where I'm like, oh, I really like this one or I really like this one. And I obviously use different colors because my hair color always changes. I have found a product that I just have been using for months now and I absolutely love it. And I can't imagine giving it up for anything else. So the few, I actually use two different products in my brows. So I can't really imagine using it or using another product and liking it more than the ones I'm gonna talk about in this video. So if you are wanting to learn how to kind of fill in your brows and give them more of a natural look, then you're in the right place. So I'm kind of like, some people are still doing brows and by some people, I mean people in the beauty space that I know on YouTube or I follow myself, some are just doing still that really drawn look and it looks good on some people. Um, for me, I'm not really loving that. If I'm gonna do that, I'll even do just like from here, here, it's like natural bushy, natural like bushy type. And then I'll kind of do this straighter over here. There's also people that are still doing their, like doing their brows like so bushy, like looking, but it's, it's, like manufactured, like it's a fake brow look and it's just bushy all the way through the whole thing. And like, it's just, it's too much. It's too much, like really too much. Like it doesn't look good, like it's distracting. And obviously I'm not gonna name names or call anyone out because if the way that you do your makeup makes you happy, that's all that matters. For me personally though, I see that and I'm like, okay, I'm definitely not going to do that because if I wanted to do that, I would literally just stick an eyelash like that, or maybe like a cup, maybe a, no, we need some more volume in the front. You know what I'm saying? Let's just, we'll put this one here. Oh gosh, work with me here. We'll put this one over here and then we'll put the extra bushy one right in front. And like, this is what I would do if I wanted a brow that looked like that all the way across. That's not what we're doing today, folks. And you know, the way that I do my brows, maybe you don't like, and that's okay. Like we're allowed to not like each other's brows. It's fine. Brows are very personal. It's like a the brow journey is a very personal relationship. And so if you do like the way that I do my brows, then I thought I'd make a video because many of you have been asking for it. So the star of the show is the Urban Decay Brow Blade product. Before this came out, I've mentioned this in another video, but I was thinking to myself, I absolutely love these small brow, like micro brow pencils. I was just thinking to myself, I'm like, I really like to do the small, like little hair flicks too with like my gel. Why doesn't someone put them together in one product? So this came out and I was like, uh, the makeup gods were literally listening to me. They made it happen. This is that product. You get one side that is a waterproof ink stain. And so this creates little, flicks and you can kind of decide like how, it's kind of like calligraphy, you can decide how thick you want it to be. And then the other side is a waterproof micro pencil like this. I usually use uh, Cafe Kitty and Dark Drapes. I use the collection of both of them um, to give my brows a little bit of dimension, but I, I'm out of the Cafe Kitty, so I've been improvising and using Brunette Betty, and then also the Dark Drapes still. There is another product that I'll introduce to you when we get to it, and that is kind of the cherry on top that I hate cherries. Why does it have to be a cherry? It's a strawberry on top of the whole look in my opinion. And when I forget to do it, I get kind of bummed. Also good brows can't be rushed. Like if I'm going to be rushed doing my makeup, I just won't, I just won't put makeup on first of all, but the brow thing too. So depending on how many brow hairs you have left on your face, you're going to brush these in the general direction in which you'd like them to go. And before we even get started trying to carve out and do nice brows, pluck your damn eyebrows. Like if you have some like, a, like if you have dark hair and you're noticing them here, unless that's the look you're going for and it looks intentional, whatever, I would pluck those out so that it's not kind of confusing like 
when you're trying to put your shape down. I will start off with the pencil side and I'll start off with my lighter shade. So this is a brunette Betty and I like to get a mirror up nice and close. And I always start in the front and I start placing my brush or my brush, I mean my pencil down where I want the bottom of my brow to be. I'll try and do this and if i have time and patience i typically won't draw a line right here and continue it back i'll just let those flicks right there kind of be the front of the brow because it looks a little less natural if you do a line from here all the way back i will kind of build out where and i always try and take into account like my eyebrows are actually uneven like one is always i don't know if it's my face that's like flexing and it's always higher but it's like literally always higher so i try and take that into account and figure out like, okay, I'm gonna be building this up over here. So this is gonna be this high. And then also this ends a little before my tear duct ends. So I'll take this out a little bit. So my brow hair stop over here, I take this out usually. And this is actually really hard for me to talk and do my brows at the same time. So hopefully they turn out decent, but if not, you can go look at my Instagram if you wanna see what they normally look like when I take my time and don't talk. So I'll kind of take this and flick up and kind of this way slightly. And then as I get over here, I kind of straighten it out a little bit and I bring it over so that it's kind of matched up with the edge of my nostril where my nose rounds off right there. And if you put this and you rest it between kind of the ball area of your nose and where your nostril kind of begins and it goes too far over this way, your brows are too close together. That's not natural. That's not how they should look. So that might be what's throwing you off a little bit. And then I kind of start to avoid the bottom because I'm gonna draw that in right there. And I build off of this height that I have going here and I kind of flick it towards over here. Like I'll just imagine like a line going like this and I'll kind of use that. And I start building this up and I kind of build in here a little bit more so it's not so sparse and then see where I need to pull this up a little bit more. And I kind of just flick away here until it is kind of how I want it. And honestly, the part I struggle with the most with my brows is the end of my brow. Like, I don't really like this part. I always like try and ignore it and just do it real quick and like whatever. But I'll just show you what I do anyway. This rounded area right here is also a little bit of a struggle. I try and just kind of make my little flicks up and then just kind of fill this in as it would if it was real hair and kind of just flick it up. And then I see where my line, I kind of imagine where my line's gonna be over here and then just start pulling out from that spot and do this. And sometimes this kind of muddies up a little bit cause you don't have as fine of a tip as you want. So I'll kind of just fill it in and then I go back and define some hair strokes with this guy. And so kind of once I've started to fill this in a little bit and I'm like, okay, where do I go from here? This is when I start to kind of fill in this bottom area and I'll usually start kind of right there and just kind of build out how I want this to be. And I always know that I can go in and, you know, correct this with concealer. And then I kind of see where I need to fill it in based on that bottom area and I start kind of doing little flicks and like I do less and less and less as I get towards the end of the tail. And then I'll kind of look back at the brow and reevaluate. Sometimes I'll go back in, depending on how much time I have, I'll go back in with like a little tiny spoolie and I'll just lightly, cause you can see how this hair is kind of sticking right there. And I'm just like, do I actually need to fill that in or do I just need to brush it out? Chances are I probably need to fill it in cause I have like seven eyebrow hairs. I kind of like to do this just to see kind of like, okay, what's this gonna look like if I just, you know, lightly fill this in like so. I kind of try and do flicks still instead of just like coloring it in because that doesn't look natural. So I kind of look at the front again and see where I need some little hair looking things sticking up and I kind of, you know, just work on that slowly. Then I look again, I look at the bottom shape and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna bring this down a tiny bit right there. And then this got a little fuzzy right there. We're gonna fix that with concealer, so don't worry about it. I think this is looking pretty good. I will usually kind of go back and forth between these steps. So like I've done a little bit more on this side than I would typically do all on one side. So when I do the first little flickies in the middle, I probably should have done this how I normally do it, but when I did the first little flickies in the middle, I usually would go and do it on this side just so I can make sure that I'm matching it throughout the process. And you're gonna wanna do that if you're kind of, this is a new way for you to do your brows. We'll just work on this brow though, because I feel like it's gonna be easier. This is, brow is always giving me problems. So it's gonna be easier for me to do this one off camera. So now I'm gonna take the same shade that I just did 
And I'm going to start here and I try not to get too close to the bottom because of like the hair is a little too thick at the bottom there. So I kind of go like in the middle, see how it creates that little dot where I started. It's just about the pressure that you're using too. So you can use a little bit less of that. And this isn't always perfect, you know, like this isn't gonna look perfect when I'm done, but this is how I do my brows. So if you, depending on where you need a little more definition, you can kind of pull this out a little more, kind of get a few more like hairs going with it that way. And just be patient, like this takes time, it takes a lot of effort and you just have to be patient with it. I'm gonna go ahead and take my concealer brush, if I can locate her. Where is she? Seriously, oh there she is. And I take um, my concealer and I put a little bit out on my palette or your hand or whatever you want to do and I get a bit of it on there and then I'm going to clean up that little one right there and then shape this out. And you got to be careful with how much concealer you're applying right here, especially if you have an eyeshadow look that goes up this high because you're going to feather it down very lightly so you don't have a harsh concealer line. You know, it just doesn't, it's not a good look. So you can kind of brush this down and then we'll, with whatever's left over on your brush that you did your eyeshadow with, you can kind of just do that again. Now what I would do is I would go to my darker brow blade product and this one is Dark Drapes. And it depends how I'm feeling, like how my roots look, how, how much I wanna go in with a darker shade. Lately, I've just been taking the ink stain one and kind of going through and doing some of the hairs. And I kind of do them over here so it makes it look like I have like more eyebrow hair than I really do. And it might be hard to see on camera, but you can see it gives the illusion of more hair if you look closely because this is a darker shade and you can see some of the strokes a little bit. And sometimes, honestly, like I said, I'm not super good at this area. Sometimes I just get a little crazy and it looks like really bushy and weird. And then sometimes right near the bottom of the line right there, I'll draw some little hair so it looks like I was so careful plucking my thick eyebrows, you know? So just for shits and giggles, I'm gonna show you a little bit how I would use the darker one. My roots aren't super dark right now, but if you do have darker hair and you think your eyebrows are looking a little too light, kind of the same thing as with the ink stain, but kind of keeping it more towards the bottom where it would be like the thickest kind of, I would kind of draw a little bit of like following that contour line again or the, the concealer line. And I'm not pushing that hard right now, so you may not see much of a difference because I didn't really want to do this part, but I'll kind of just give it a little more dimension and support in terms of it being a little bit darker and I'll kind of flick some darker ones in here too. And then I go ahead and I use the ColourPop Brow Gel. Again, I have two different shades of this. So light brown and dark brown. So it's kind of depending on how I'm feeling about the brow. So today I'm gonna go in with the light brown because I'm feeling like this is kind of a lot of darkness for my hair. You don't want too much product in here. You're gonna end up with like what looks like a brow that you just used out of like a pot, like a gel pot or something. It kind of coats some of the hairs and makes your brows look a little more natural. So I'll try and kind of catch some of my actual natural brows and it kind of gives a little bit of a texture and it kind of coats some of the, I was about to do the other side, but there's nothing there, <laughs> literally nothing there. So that's kind of what I do with my brows. I'm gonna do this one off camera and add any further notes for you guys, but but um, yeah, I'll be right back. Here is the full, so this eyebrow, I always like push it up. I don't know why I do that. Anyways, here is the full like eyebrow look. Again, they're not perfectly even, but your eyebrows should be sisters or close friends, not twins, because no one's face is symmetrical. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and go me for actually putting a normal tutorial on my channel. I hope you guys like it. I've seen your comments and here's the video you asked for. So uh, let me know what you guys think. What brow products have you been absolutely loving? Do you think there's one that could possibly come out that could take the place of the brow blade? Because I don't think so. I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching. Bye.